a lot has changed since the last time. A lot has changed on my side. A lot has changed in the Flutter community. And I suppose a lot has changed for you. So today we will be doing some housekeeping in our application. We will try to adapt it. We will change it. We will try to simplify it um, and making it a little bit more uh, pretty, <laughs> so to speak. But the general idea for this episode is to, I will explain why I am so obsessed about streams and why I think we don't use streams in Flutter as much as we should. Hopefully I will be able to convince you that we should use streams more in Flutter. But before we do that, I have a small announcement. So I'm getting a lot of messages, people asking me why this course is so slow, why I'm not releasing more often. It's, you know, life is life and um, I can only apologize for that, but it's more a fun project for me, you know, exploring and building this application. Because if you watched all my videos, you know that I'm not really a mobile programmer. I'm interested in Flutter and specifically in Dart because uh, the same people who are creating now this programming language, they used to work in uh, other companies, creating, working on my favorite programming languages, which is uh, Self and Smalltalk. And this is how I discovered Dart and this is why I'm interested in, in this programming language, because there are some interesting ideas. Yeah, but I was talking about those messages. So people contact me and they want you expect uh, to have like a full overview of everything, like a comprehensive uh, view and you won't do it fast, which I understand. So I decided to do a course, another course, and this time paid course. And I don't like those short introductions, you know, when you have like a few videos and, and all that. So my idea is to do a, a longer course. It will be a 12 week course about Flutter and it's called Flutter from A to Z. So I'll be trying to get you from knowing nothing or a little about Flutter to being somehow proficient. But I wouldn't say advanced. I would rather say someone who's advanced beginner in the sense that you will be able to you know, create Flutter applications, but you will still lack the experience which comes with years of programming, of course, because there is no such course that can get you from knowing nothing to a programmer in a, in a short amount of time. It requires um, years of experience and it's more than just knowing about technology. It's about, you know, working on a team with a team, having soft skills, able to communicate and all that. So there's a lot of things uh, that contribute to being a good programmer. But in this course, I will be trying you to give you like all the basis about all the things in Flutter that you may need in your um, when you're creating applications. So, you know, from state management to animations, uh, database integration, all that. So you have all the tools and then you have to figure everything else uh, by, you know, working with Flutter and, and creating real applications. And on top of that, I'm collaborating with some companies, with some software companies that are using Flutter and I'm arranging my material according to their recruiting practices. So I cannot promise anything, but I will be putting participants of this program in touch with those companies so that they could be hired. And of course, again, uh, it's a not a promise, but it's just an opportunity. Uh, I don't know how I will do it, but probably I will be grading participants of this program and the, the best people will have a chance to, you know, like a short, I will give them a shortcut to be introduce those companies and possibly find um, quickly a job uh, doing Flutter. Yeah, but this is not a video about this course. I'm just announcing it quickly. I will probably do a separate video about that. If you're interested, I will put a link in the description about all that. Okay, so let's start with the housekeeping. Before we do, I would like to we contemplate together this little quote which is attributed to Phil Carlton. There are only two hard things in computer science, cache invalidation and naming things. So today I will be focusing on this second problem, naming things, because I changed few names. I really like changing names. <laughs> I like changing names because I want programs to be easier to understand. And I don't like that we have those fear 
among programmers are, are changing things, breaking things. So we'll be changing some, some names, the names I introduced today, and I hope you don't mind. So another difference is that I've started, I've started using Android Studio. I kind of like it. I've been using some of, most, some of the advanced features of this editor recently. And yeah, we, we'll see together how, how it goes. In this application, we are using uh, the Sprinkle architecture, which is my own invention. And this is a little tool which helps you to create Flutter applications. And the idea is to have like uh, convenience methods, the, the things that are the most common and to, to remove the boilerplate, to remove the repetition and, and to make writing Flutter applications easier and, and faster. So I've been working, I've been, I've been refining certain ideas about Sprinkle recently, and today we will adapt our application to those recent additions. And I will specifically focus today on the state management. So let's try to first remove errors. So if you add Sprinkle version 3, the most recent version, you will get some errors in this application. So this is what we are getting. And let's try to eliminate them. So the first thing I changed is that I renamed Overseer to Supervisor. We need to change that. So it's the same class, it's just a different name because, you know, naming things is hard. So that's the first error. Let's go further. The second error is that I re renamed the fetch that we use on context to use. So it's more in, in lines with how we do things in React.js or Vue.js version 3. So it's like, you know, they use hooks or in Vue.js you have this concept of a composition API. And I try to use the same terminology so it's familiar because at the end of the day, all those solutions, they share the same concepts. It's, it's basically the same idea, you know. The renamings I, I've done in Sprinkle in this application try to reflect that. So if you are working on this application and maybe you are doing React uh, on the side or Vue.js, you will instantly recognize the same uh, patterns, the same names and the same kind of similar ways of doing things. So that's the reason I renamed fetch to use because fetch is somehow like a generic name. And there is a little trick here we could use, we could simplify this code. So if, if we remove this part, it will still work. So it's kind of like a magic because we don't specify anything here for use and it still works because we have this type inference in Dart. So use knows which a manager to get based on this declaration over here. Uh, you, you can use it like that, but I don't like this. Uh, I prefer to be explicit. So to use counter manager, and this way it, it reads somehow like a hook in React or composition API in, in Vue.js. And then we can remove this to be shorter. So that's my uh, preferred style of writing of uh, including managers into widgets right now. So that's the um, how I write it. So let's go further. Uh, so now we need to use fetch here and here as well. And here I will simplify it, as I said just a minute ago. Okay, and let's improve our screens. So what we have here, okay. So again, use and don't need this type because it's inferred. If you hover, it correctly knows the type based on, on this type over here. And again here, it's here as well. I made this comment a while ago, so I wanted it to be like a hook in React. So now it's kind of similar, but we are using streams. That's the only difference. And yeah, so why I'm so obsessed about streams? Um, because I think if you are doing a real application, you will end up working with uh, streams. So if you're creating a production application, at some point you need to either store the data in a database, which will be probably something like Firebase, or you need to interact with some external APIs. And in both of those scenarios, you would probably need to use uh, streams because 
In Firebase, the API is stream-based. And if you want to interact with uh, an endpoint, as we've seen in, in other videos, it's good to use things like the bounce and switch map, because this way you control the interaction with this external um, API. So the idea is that if you need to use streams to interact with those um, entities outside of your application, why don't we use streams inside as well? So we have just a one way of doing things, just a one, you know, approach to everything. Either it's internal state or it's the state which is external, living in the database somewhere in the cloud or an API that, that is managed by someone else. We are using streams everywhere. So it's like a um, uniform approach. So that's why I wanted, that's why I don't want to use something like provider because it's a different approach. It's some kind of a trick to manage state. And I think we should get used to using streams. And I made some adjustments in, in the sprinkle to make the stream usage a little bit more, um, a little bit simpler. So let's see that. Our application is working. And let's start with this third screen, which is calendar. So if you go here to the calendar, you will see we have a counter in calendar. This is kind of funny. Let's go to this counter and let's try to use this new approach I'm suggesting. So we need to go to counter manager now. And here, let's simplify all that. So before we used behavior subject. But now in Sprinkle, you can just say, you can remove the type and you can just say reactive. And we need to um, add the Sprinkle extension. It's exactly the same thing as before. It creates a behavior subject but the syntax is a little bit nicer. It's just an extension on, uh, on an integer in this case that creates uh, this behavior uh, subject automatically. I like to call this a store so that it's familiar with those other uh, approaches to state management and other technologies such as React, Vue.js or Elm. This is our store. So managers has stores. You can have one store or many stores and the, the source are reactive. And now let's remove that and let's remove that. Here we are communicating uh, through a sync, as you remember, but we can simplify that. We can simplify that because there are some nice aliases in Eric start and we can just say counter value like that. So it's very similar to Vue.js if you, if you know Vue.js. So we need to take our store and its current value and we are just incrementing that. So it's slightly nicer and the same goes for um, decrementing. So as you can see, and yeah, and those things are called effects. Okay. So manager defines effects as methods that are applied on the store to change the state. And uh, that's basically the, the whole idea. So now if we go back to our counter here, I'm getting, so I, here I will just simplify it as I said. Here I can just say uh, counter, it should work. So if I restart, it works. And if we are fetching the behavior subject, it returns the stream so we can uh, observe it. So we don't, we can be more explicit and say stream because it's also available. But just to be shorter, the stream is also available counter manager and we introduce the store, we added some effects and then we can interact with the store through effects that are defined in the manager. So if you go to calendar screen, also have this fab button and manager exposes the effect that can be used on press. Okay, but Sprinkle is not only about state management, it's more like an architecture. So there is a lot of there will be a lot of convenience methods. So I introduce a few of them right now. So the, the first one we will use is to make navigation a little bit simpler. So instead of doing this material page route, navigator push, and then find the builder, we can just do display on the context. So again, this is an extension on the context, on the build context, and we can simplify that. So if we go to the uh, message list, for example, 
uh, here. So we will take care of the warning later. I just wanted to show you that those five or six lines here we can replace with doing context display, just passing the uh, the instance like that. So then we can remove that, something of that sort. And we need to add the uh, sprinkle extension as, as well. So now if so, this is the message list, which allows us to move from the list to a particular message. As you can see, it works. I think I will stop here. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more and see you in the next one.